I'm going to share a short word, I think, with you. Uh, also from basically my day words for this time, this season. And I'm starting from Job 42. And uh, what you can write down, the word capacity. Capacity. Anybody of you said before, I don't have the capacity to handle that person or to deal with that situation or to carry on with, with them. I don't have the capacity for that anymore. Uh, you don't have to raise your hands. Okay. But you hear what I'm saying. And I'm challenging you today to say, will it be God's capacity in you or yours? Because there's guys out there not serving Christ, but they have a capacity. And they, some of them are doing excellent, excellent, a lot of work that is successful and they accomplish amazing lot of things. But the problem, the challenge is someday it will be all burned away with no inheritance, with no legacy, with nothing really positive to leave for the next generation. The difference between us and them is God's capacity, the capacity of heaven that is locked up in your spirit. You have the potential for such a lot. You have the capacity because God is in your life. That's why you can do amazing, amazing things. Job, speaking to God, said, I know that you can do all things, that you can do all things. No purpose of yours can be impossible. No purpose can be withheld from you. Nothing that's according to the plan, the purpose, the dream of God. Nothing can hinder that to happen. So you have this ultimate capacity, Lord. That is what Job is saying. But you know, before that, Job had the capacity to say whatever he wants in, in the context of what he feels, that's it. And me and you, we can have the capacity in the flesh. We can have the capacity in, in a tantrum to say a lot of things. Okay, sorry, only me it seems. But um, that there's a lot of things that we can do. But when that capacity is surrendered to God, surrender to God, you will stand amazed at what he will bring forth in and through your life. That's our challenge, my brother and my sister, because even three chapters before that, as we said many, 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 many times, when Job had a lot of things to say, such a lot of things that his wife just said, curse God and die. Whoa, there must be some things happening in your life to come to that point that your partner will say that. Then God came, remember? And then he said to Job, Job, I will sit. You come and teach me. What is God saying? Since you have all the answers, since you have the capacity to say whatever you want and you think it's okay. And then God said to him, where were you when I created this? Where were you when I declared that? Where were you when this was created, when that was created? Where were you? And after God spoke to him, and not answering all his questions, but just speak from his side, his agenda, in that what he sees, what is necessary to be imparted in Job's life. At the end of that, here comes Job, and he says, you ask, who is this that obscures my plans without knowledge? Surely I spoke of things I did not understand. Stand. Things too wonderful for me to know. I shall sit and listen. For you to speak, I question, and you answer me and teach me. Hello? If I understand God's capacity, I will be teachable. I will be open for whatever he wants to bring. I will not first expect of him to explain himself. To explain himself. We will never say that. But we say, Lord, I just want to understand. 
Um, and so many times with us saying, God, I just want to understand this and this. It's actually a little bit arrogant of saying, God, explain yourself. God does not need to explain himself. He's pleased by faith that you by faith will trust him as a little child, enter the kingdom as a child, and believe what his word says and do it. And just plainly do it. This man got the breakthrough when he realized it's not the capacity of my success with everything I had. Yes, there were awesome principles in his life that he knew about God. That's why the devil tried his best. Because there's awesome principles from God in your life, in your life. That's why the enemy would try and destroy what you have. That you will throw away that what is precious in your life that is actually from God. So when you go through many situations that you don't understand what on earth is happening, don't go with reasoning, please. Just go with God has this major awesome capacity for me to break through, for me to have an excellent life, for me to love him, to love others, to love myself, to, to go for that what he has for my future. Amen. But when I put myself in a place of judgment, and I say, I will not be like him. I will not be like her. I will not be like my father, my mother, that teacher, that, that person. I will not be like that. I bring the curse. I bring a curse of a generational curse of judgment in my life, and I will make a mess of my future. But you have the capacity to break even generational curses, things of, of the past, and you can walk into the blessings of God, not the blessings, not the promises that God has promised you, but also the promises, promises from your fathers and there, your grand, grandpa, your grandma, and the previous and the previous generations of that what they did not take possession of. Because it was the promise to Abram. It was the promise to the grandfather that the children and the great grandfather that the children took hold of. Because they knew how to honor and respect in spite of. Doesn't mean when you're older that you need to obey everything your parents say. No, no don't confuse that. When a person is very young, yes, you need to obey. But later you need to understand the principles of God and go according to that. So later you can be tested where God would say, if you love your mother and your father more than me, you're not worthy of me. Ooh, where does that come in? That's when you've been taught the right principles, but now you need to apply it. And God in his jealous love would even expect of you in some situations to choose. Must I... Now do what God is saying to me, or must I do what my mom and dad is saying to me? If they are saying something different, that just means you need to go to God ten times more and make sure that you make sure that you make sure you are hearing from God. But then you need to do what God said. When God said to me, leave medical school and go full time into ministry, my parents were very, very, very angry. Because I got a bursary, now I must pay back everything. And I enjoyed it actually a lot. And they said, why? Why can you not just obey? Why can you not just go with the talents? Why throw away everything the God has given you? And even when I was baptized, I said, why, can you, why are you disobeying? But I was like 22, 23. I said, you taught me to respect God. You taught me to obey Him. You taught me to love his word and to do as he says. And because of what you taught me, that's why I'm going to do this. Hello? So later in life, he's taking the principle. But because then God expects of you, you stand, you stand not behind your mom and your dad when you stand before God. You stand before God. So I don't know why I'm saying that today, but I just feel I need to say that. So, part of my day with is uh, 1 Timothy, if you have a Bible with that book, 1 Timothy 6, 11 and 12. But you, man of God, flee from all of this. Everybody say flee. 
And pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. Everybody say pursue. Fight the good fight of the faith. Everybody say fight. And then take hold of the eternal life to which you were called. Everybody say take hold. We spoke about this actually, I can't remember, a year or two or three or four before. There's intensity in this. There's an intensity. It's not just, let's walk away. No, it's flee. Let's, let's take that. No, it's pursue. It's fight. It's take hold of. You hear that intensity. There's an intensity. But it's not for you to fight the enemy. But to go with what God has for you. But even that, if there's a flee, there's a pursue, there's a fight, there's a take hold of. Okay, but what about God's peace? What about just being with him? Yes, that's on a mountain. That's you with God. You need to understand how to be at his feet like Mary. You need to understand how to have time with him. Just speaking to him and him speaking to you. And have this awesome intimate time with God. But then when coming down from the mountain, you need to deal with a golden calf. Or that golden idol, rubbish. Then in that place, when there's Israelites moaning and groaning, and those voices of moaning and groaning, where, where is the food? Manna. No, oh, we want meat. Where is the water? Water from the rock. Where this? Where that? No, there's too many giants out there. They, they're going to destroy us. And at one stage, God said, that was enough. You will not enter. He didn't send them to hell. But you will not enter what I have for you here on earth. You can destroy what God has for you here on earth. You can destroy that what God is dreaming about, what God is excited about, about an excellent life for you tomorrow, next year. By what? Doing the grumbling, the moaning, and not honoring the capacity that God has placed in you. Because He is your capacity. I know that with you, everything is possible. Disciples said, we cannot. And then Jesus said, but with God, everything is possible. You cannot. With you, it's impossible with man. But with God, it's possible. Everything is possible. And that's why only Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. The full capacity of heaven is in you and it's available to you. Now, what are we talking about then? If he says, flee from all of this, he first of all says, man of God. Now you, man of God, now you, woman of God, you, as a child of God, you that identify with Christ, you that is in Christ and Christ in you. Because you are in Christ and Christ in you and you are called a man of God or a woman of God, that you are from God, therefore, because you have that capacity, you can do the following. Flee from all the authority, all the rubbish that is from hell, that is out there in the world. And we, like we said in the past, he's not fleeing and looking, and you're looking at, at that sexual rubbish uh, that you must break with. You look at that anxiety. You look at that fear. You look at that negativity. You look at that depression, and you're running from it, but you focus there. Well, Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Well, we have such a cloud of witnesses to learn from people in the past that went before us. Let us lay down every yoke and the sin that so easily entangles and then run the race with endurance, eyes focused on Him, Jesus Christ, author, perfecter of your faith. Not run, too many times running and looking at that. Now that's what performers do. I don't, I don't get it right to deal with this thing, to deal with that thing. But you're focusing on that thing. Now, how do you want to run away from something looking there? You're going to fall. You're going to fall. Look at him. Because you're looking at the one that brought you the big victory. You look at the capacity of heaven when you're looking at him. In him is your victory. In him is your victory. Look at your victory, Jesus Christ. 
don't look at your failure or not failure, your performance, your that. No. He, the battle belongs to him. He brought you the victory. That's why you can be more than a conqueror. You look at the conqueror, and when you look at the conqueror, your life, you're not better than Jesus, more than a conqueror. He's not more than Jesus, but more than the conqueror is the one that's going to brag about the conqueror. The one that's going to testify. The one that's going to bear the fruit of his victory. That is showing the, the proof of his victory. Your life showing the proof of his victory. But then first of all, you need to take it. You need to believe it. Amen. You, man of God. You that identify with Christ. You that are in victory and the victorious one in you. Flee from all of this. Then pursue Righteousness. Righteousness, you can write there down. Righteousness is, has to do with stature. Your capacity that you have to, have to walk with stature. You have the capacity, but that does not mean you're going to walk in it. But you have the capacity because he's in you. No. You're going to walk and the world and their capacity to tell you what you will, what you will not. You will watch the movie where they curse the name of Jesus, where they mock the name of Jesus, and you will say nothing because you want to watch that movie till the end. You will not walk out. You will stay there. You will compromise and not respect the fact that God needs to be honored. Oh, you can have the capacity from the world. You can have the capacity from hell to do a lot of rubbish. Or you can pursue righteousness. I want to have a stature in Christ where his final say will come into a situation. You go tomorrow in that meeting. You go tomorrow with that team. You go tomorrow. And what do you do? You bring the final say of God into the situation. Because you pursue the final say of God. You pursue the authority of God. That's You pursue righteousness. I'm the righteousness of God. God in Christ Jesus. I have the right. I have authority. I have stature. But only, only, only in Jesus Christ. Amen. Let the righteous one speak through you. Pursue righteousness. Next one. Godliness. What is godliness? Big word. That what is godly. That what is quality. That is what people would say, oh, that's not from a man. That's godly. That's like from a God. What is in your life that people will say, that's like from a God. That's beyond the normal. That's more than the normal. Godliness. Let that be your standard. Quality. What is quality in your life when people can say, it's God that brought it to her. It's God that gave that man the victory. It's God's favor on that man. It's God's grace on that man. Then you walk into quality. And you want people to see that quality in your life. But then pursue it. But you cannot pursue if you don't flee from the other rubbish. It's not possible. Sunday we try to pursue and try to flee. And Monday we pursue rubbish. And then we actually, by pursuing the rubbish, we are fleeing from that what is right. Fleeing from my conscience. Fleeing from integrity. Fleeing from character fleeing from the fact that people are supposed to be able to trust me because they know when you speak you have a heart to seek his presence a heart to seek his will a heart to, and to seek that what he has for your life when people see that then yeah they can be trust may God help you may God help me pursue righteousness godliness faith Faith. What is faith? By faith you are saved. By faith you will overcome the world. By faith God is pleased. The righteous will walk by faith. God says through James, your faith means nothing if you cannot show it to me in a practical way through what you were walking, how you live. But then Ephesians 2 verse 6 says, faith is a gift from God. So just... Thank you for the gift, Lord. Bing! And there I have a lot of faith. No, 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 not possible. Because Romans 10 verse 17 says, Faith comes from hearing, and hearing comes from the word of God. So you must work at your faith. Okay, what does that mean then? 
Is it now a gift from God? Ping, and it's there. Or is it, I must get it from the Word? The gift is the Word of God. And when you open the gift, it's called faith. So there is the greatest, greatest, greatest gift that you could ever, ever receive on earth is the Word of God. Because by faith you are saved. How? A faith that opened was opened up through the Word because you heard the Word that said, for God so loved the world that whoever believes in Him will not perish but have eternal life. You heard the Word, and from the Word it was opened up to have the faith to surrender to the Word that you've heard. And because of the Word as the greatest gift that was opened up for you, you will not burn forever in hell. You will have eternal life with Christ. You with me? May God help you. May God help me. In Jesus' name. Faith, the capacity to overcome. You can write there. You have the capacity to overcome when you have faith. When you have faith. And it's this awesome gift that's opened up. And you will, according to your faith, know if the word was opened up to you. Because if the word was opened up, you'll just, you will have faith. You don't have to choose faith. You have faith. Next one. Love. Pursue love. We can pursue revenge. We can pursue bitterness. We can pursue all the other stuff. Justice. We can pursue justice. We can pursue, ah, whatever rubbish. We can pursue the fear. Oh, how do you pursue the fear? It's not like you choose to fear, but you pursue in running into things that is not from God. How will you deal with the fear? By running into love, because love will drive out all fear. Let the love deal with the fear. Love is God. Battle belongs to God. God will deal with the fear if you run to God, but God is love. So run into his love, and that love will deal with the fears in your heart and in your life. Amen. You have the capacity to love. You have the capacity to love. But huh, I don't have the capacity to love that guy or that lady. Or, oh. or I'm so ashamed of things that I've done in my life. I'm struggling how to love myself. Okay, the problem, let's go back and back and back. The problem, the greatest command, love the Lord your God and then love your neighbor as you love yourself. But I cannot love God with my fleshly love. So the key is I need to receive his love by faith, not by feeling. I don't feel loved tomorrow. And you have an issue because that person hurt you. And now that person disappointed you. And now you're struggling to love. Feel like fake. No, faith. Let's say faith, not fake. Now, if you don't feel like loving, you feel like the killing that person. But you choose by faith to love him. Your faith will overcome the revenge. Your faith in the love. Hello, your faith in the love. By faith you will love, and the faith will destroy the world in you. The world that wants revenge, that wants to smack that guy, that wants to this, that wants to that. Are you with me? You are still here? We're going to end. Now, now. Okay. Okay. So what am I saying? First, receive his love. And you didn't receive your love when you feel love. You received his love when you received Christ, because he is love. So the fullness of love is in you. You have the capacity to love. But first of all, let it be open to you and, and take it, what God has given you. Take the love from God. Respect him. If somebody is standing here, and they worked 30 years, 40 years, and then they would give you this house after 40 years. 
You look at them and say thank you and you walk away. What on earth is wrong with you? Why, why, why would you do that? It's even disrespectful. Then the person stand there with, here's the lease, you must just sign. It's yours. I've worked my whole life and I want to give you this. Why will you then be disrespectful and not receive the love that God has for you? It has to do with disrespect. If you respect God, then receive the love because he gave everything. He showed everything to you through Christ on the cross in how he loves you. So when you receive his love, hello, it's because I respect what you've done for me, Lord. I receive it by faith. Amen? Not by feeling. Not by feeling. And when that is here, love him with that quality love. Love him with a self-sacrifice love. Love him with a love where there's no fear with performance. Is, am I okay with God? Am I not okay with God? And then love yourself. Love the quality God has placed in you. God has made you precious. Love the quality that he has placed in you so that you are able to love others. If you struggle to love other people, it's because you struggle to love yourself. If you struggle to love yourself, it's because you're not loving God. How can you not love God? Most probably because you didn't take his love for you. Agree with your God who loves you. Thank you, God, that you love me. I will not disrespect your heart for me. I will not disrespect your love for me because you gave everything. You are serious, 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 serious about loving me. And you will not respect God's seriousness of loving you. Amen. You are still here. Then the next one, endurance. Pass you, pass you, endurance. Fast bait. Endurance. You have the capacity to go from strength to strength, from glory to glory, not in your glory. Glory like God's beauty. You have the capacity to go from beauty, the beauty of God, to more of his beauty. Beauty in life to more of beauty of life. It can be revealed in you. You have the capacity for that because God, God's endurance is in you. You have the capacity to endure because the one who endured everything from his birth to his death in the resurrection, ascension, sitting at the right hand of the Father, Jesus Christ, that endurance, that beautiful endurance is alive in you through Jesus Christ. Let's say his beautiful endurance is alive in me his name is Jesus Christ. So if Jesus Christ is yesterday, today, and forever the same, then I can endure because his passion and his love for me from of yesterday and his love for me today and his love for me in the future is the same. No, no, he will love me more. No, 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 no. Only if he changed. But God is not changing. He will love you because he's faithful to himself. He doesn't love you less. You experience less of his life because you can block the experience of his life. But he, from his side, he will not withdraw his hand from you. He will never leave you, never forsake you. Amen. You have the capacity. To endure. And last one, gentleness. Other word, meekness. The gentle or the meek will inherit the earth. What on earth? If you are really walking with meekness and gentleness, you will have a lot of property. No, oh, rubbish. That's not what it's saying. You will inherit the earth. What does it mean? The inheritance will be put before the feet of Jesus because everything... The Father is giving it to Jesus as an inheritance. But we are co-heirs with Christ. We are co-inheritors. 
No, right? With Christ. So what does that mean? What is the inheritance with Christ? Not first of all the piece of ground, but people, the nations. When you work with God, when you pursue, hello? Hello? When you pursue, pursue meekness, you, got, you can come into a position to, to have that impact out there into the nations. You in, there's part of an inheritance for you with the Ukrainians because of your prayer that is accurate. In Bluefontein, part of your inheritance because you are praying for the people. You are walking. You are in, in Christ. You are walking in his love. You are showing who he is to the people. If you are, have a meekness in you, but that meekness, that gentleness, you will see it in how teachable you are. If you are very quick to argue, very quick to have a, a reasoning about certain things, very quick to, to question certain things, just know, no meekness. No meekness. The guys that questioned everything, they had no destiny. That Pharisee, Sadducees, they had no destiny. Malachi, when they just... God would speak to the prophet Malachi and, and say, you're always asking this. I tell you this, and then you always question it. God had to deal with that before the coming of his son. Before God wants to do a major thing in you, to prepare the way for Christ coming more and more in every area of your life. You need to do, deal with that questioning, with the fact of not being flexible, teachable. Because when you know, I'm flexible and teachable, that is when I would know I'm walking in meekness and gentleness. But God can entrust the earth. God can entrust partnership with you into the nations. Partnership with you into what he's doing in Bluefontein. Partnership with what he wants to do in the education and in the kids, in the next generation. But you cannot partner with him. He will not partner with you if you're not walking with gentleness, with meekness, with, with a teachable spirit. You can have success. Go and have your success. Just like the guy that cursed God. Because God has placed capacity in every human being. But you will not be a partner with Christ. What you do will not necessarily have eternal impact for the generations. But if you do it with God, if you partner with him, what an honor. What an honor that he can trust you. That you will not put that inheritance between you and him. Why? Because you walk with gentleness, with meekness, with a teachable spirit, with a flexibility under his guidance. That's what God has for you. You have that capacity for that excellent life. Guide us, help us, Lord, please. We need you. We need you, Lord, and thank you that through Christ Jesus, you have placed the capacity of heaven in our hearts. God, I pray that that will become a revelation, that it will explode in every man and woman in this place for their future, for today, for tomorrow, for next year. That they will hear from you, Lord. They will surrender their lives like never before, in Jesus' name. So we pray, Lord, God, as we pursue that what is from you. But God, only if we flee from that what is wrong, the root of all evil, that greed, in selfishness, Lord. Forgive us for every form of selfishness. We flee from this selfishness. Flee from this flesh. By pursuing that what is excellence from you, Lord. Thank you for that, Father. We honor you for that. That we can do that and fight the good fight of faith. Where the fight, the battle belongs to you. Faith in you, the victorious one. Faith that you will sort it out. That is the fight, Lord, to believe that. The good fight. The good fight of faith. Thank you for that, Lord, that we can embrace eternal life. That what has eternal value. Every man and woman in this place, that we will walk out of this place as we embrace that what will have eternal value for us and the next generations. Come and guide us in that, Lord. Thank you for your awesome faith in us, Lord, and help us to put our faith in the place where you are, to believe that what you believe, to be excited about that what you are excited about, Lord, to dream with you about tomorrow. 
Come and bring us into that place through your grace, through your blood. In Jesus' name, so we pray. And all say, Amen, Amen, Amen. Let it be so. In Jesus' name.